Hey, Sean Jantz here. I'm going to do a quick benefit plan for Thursday, April 30th, and I'm going to do it on Slash GS, which is the S&P 500 and the other indices that you can find on Nadex. And I'm going to start here on Slash GS, and every single evening, I like to start here on the four-hour chart, or what I like to call the bird's eye view. And as far as a day trader goes, the four-hour chart's the most important chart to understand, is what is our bias on this four-hour chart? Are we overbought, oversold, or are we at uh, equilibrium? And just a little bit of a recap. Um, I would say roughly eight, maybe even pushing up to nine out of 10 trading days make total sense to me. And uh, where the movement, all the move, and especially in re retrospect, hindsight, all the moves make sense. I would say today, when I say today, I mean Wednesday's trading day, was probably one of those two out of 10, one out of 10 days where I was a little surprised what the market did. And what I mean is I just a super, super slow grind. Uh, to the upside. I was a little surprised the market did that. Obviously, a lot of fundamental money and there was actually some earnings. A lot of these tech companies actually came out and had good earnings. The tech companies did, obviously. They're, I mean, they're not going to, you know, Facebook, Microsoft, they're all doing well e even during this coronavirus time. And so t I think Tesla had good earnings too somehow a little bit. And uh, that kind of pushed these indices higher. And I was really surprised that it did that. And so we've, we're now pushing into what's officially roughly, you know, 50-day highs. So clearly, you know, we don't have, we're pushing into no structure, which sucks. So we're severely overbought. I'm going to be really surprised, really surprised if we continue to go higher. You know, you can see we're about 50 points away from a very large magnet, big round number, 3,000. And so I'll be, and I'm not saying we won't make it higher. I'm saying without a pullback, right? So notice how this market, it cycled really well. And you can see cycle up, cycle down, really good cycle there. I kind of figured we would see a cycle, a little bit of a cycle today. And then, and then we start to push and we didn't get, we didn't get one lick. And so I took actually a loss today. I posted in the Trader Tribe because I thought we would see a cycle and we didn't. Kind of sucked. And so we move, and you look at the, the daily time frame, we're definitely getting really uh, overbought. So when we move here to the 15 day, 15 minute plot chart, no more indicators. And what we're looking for here is just structure. We're looking for the best places to buy, the best places to sell. We're looking for support, resistance, supply, and demand zones. And what I always do is I start exactly where price is and then I start planning and visualizing. What am I going to do or not do at every single level if this market goes higher? And then what am I going to do or not do at every single level if the market goes lower? So let's first talk about if we go higher. We just touched on it. We're hitting 50-day highs. So if the market goes higher, there's no structure up here in terms of price In terms of price structure. You can possibly draw some fibs, some trend lines, things like that that you learn in the Price Action Mastery course. But in terms of just price structure, there's nothing up here over two, almost, oh, uh, almost two months. And so I'm not saying that you can't look for sell triggers on these deviations, maybe even 3,000 where you find some change control, scalp some sell triggers. Uh, but just understand you got no structure, so it's a lower probabilities. To the downside, that's where all the structure is. It's a little bit simpler. There's definitely going to be a really good opportunity. I wouldn't sell just yet. A pretty decent opportunity for possibly an 80% roll. I would wait for po uh, set Thursday's POC for the line in the sand. That's pretty obvious. And then you got to wait and see if you can find some pullbacks. That's the key. Sometimes it just tanks and it's hard to catch. But if it can get in there and find some pullbacks, that makes it really simple where you get in, enter, stop loss, and then you can, uh, I would use 8 to 10 points for TP targets and then locking and trailing for if you're trading multiple contracts for the 80% rule. If I were to buy this chart, you know, negative 0.5 uh, typically would be a first level where you're looking for demand. I'm going to hold off buying there just because we're too overbought. If I were to buy this chart, I would want to be pushing back into here or even the negative one and a half and or the negative two. Because if I buy here, I'm not saying it's not it's not terrible. You know, you got a 2,900, negative 0.5. You got some resistance breakout structure there. So it's 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 if you want to try and scalp, it's okay. But if, it, if you buy there and it continues to go lower, don't be crying because you're just buying inside of a, uh, severely overbought chart, okay, on the bird's eye view. Slash in Q is definitely not my favorite. So this is, you can really see when that earnings came out, that sucker spiked. And so I personally really do not like this chart for tomorrow. And, uh, you know, you got deviations here, 
possible target there at negative uh, 0.5. You know, price loves to get sucked back where these orig where these volume spikes originate from. So it's just shy. I would probably even target like big round number 9,000 if you're going to try and fade this. So wait for some wait for some strength and pullbacks first. If I were to buy this chart, you know, you got value rate low, negative one Tuesday, and then you got a lot of structure down here for negative one and a half and or negative two. YM is almost identical to ES, so not much new to talk about there. And then RTY is probably my least favorite chart. Actually, sorry, NQ is my least favorite. This is what this would be the second least favorite. But uh, you can see a decent um, to the upside, right? Same types of deals. Actually, one thing that I want to touch, I, I just re remembered this, that I did. I do this trade plan obviously in my head before I actually record it. There is some structure right here at value rate high, BTG plus 0.5. So this market actually hit like the BTG plus two on Wednesday, sold off. So if this possibly can retrace and double tap that high right there, I like that actually. Plus 0.5, value rate high. So as far as the other three, they don't have that opportunity. This one actually pretty good. So and then if it breaks, uh, I won't be trading up there if it breaks. And then to get through set, hold lower highs. Here's your juicy target, value rate low, negative 0.5. If I were to buy this chart, I don't know if I will, but... Uh, if I were, I would need a significant pulling back into negative one. And really, I'd love to see negative one and a half and or negative two before I feel good. You know, pull. obviously, the market's severely bullish, but we're overbought. We're going to need a cycle first. So if I can cycle back down, you know, big round number, 1300, things like that. So don't forget, we also have deviations on the three major forex pairs you can see that right here we also have deviations and value rate on gold futures and crude oil futures so make sure that you're taking pictures of all of your trades and use the four-step trading process post the bird's eye view the worm's eye view and the trade stamps three pictures and put it in the trader tribe so you can get feedback from me and from others